Hi everyone, it's Kim Bowles, president and founder of Not Putting on a Shirt. Our organization promotes optimal aesthetic outcomes for women who go flat after mastectomy or after explant. Um, so most breast cancer charities focus on the medical side, things like awareness, screening, ending disparities, providing support services, and research. Our focus is on improving the quality of life for women who choose to go flat. And we do this by empowering patients directly and also empowering providers as well with tools and information. And then we work with institutional stakeholders to um, get to a durable, improved standard of care for flat closure. Our message is that all reconstructive choices are valid and they are all beautiful. We're not anti-reconstruction, we are pro-choice. We're not defined by our breasts. This is our, this is our motto. This is who we are now and we're not going to hide it. We are whole. Women are happy flat. Um, there's a prevailing myth that women who go flat suffer psychologically and that's just not true according to the research. Um, there's no clear or significant benefit to either option. So it's a matter of patient preference. It's very important that we emphasize um, that this is uh, fact-based. The problem we're trying to solve is that flat isn't on the menu. One in three women are not even offered flat as an option. They're just shunted to the reconstruction surgeon. And one in four women who choose to go flat get an unacceptable aesthetic outcome. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's hard to describe. I'll show you. This is a mastectomy photo. So, um, On the left, you'll see an aesthetic flat closure. You can see it's a nice, smooth incision. Um, there's no extra skin left. It's nice and smooth and flat. Chest wall contour is restored. And on the right, this is what happens if you don't um, give any attention to the aesthetics after you remove the breast tissues. Lots of extra skin, lumps and bumps and unevenness and a very unpleasant result to wake up to and uncomfortable as well. And the question is, how would you want to be treated? No one deserves to wake up like this on the right. Women deserve better. Women deserve um, aesthetic flat closure. It's about dignity. It's about um, waking up to see our choice reflected back to us with dignity. Um, the harms of what we call flat denial, which is when you wake up to this egregiously poor result, despite being really clear with your surgeon, um, the harms are significant. Um, in particular with intentional flat denial, which is what happened to me. I, I was on the operating table and I heard my surgeon say, I'll just leave a little extra in case you change your mind. And I woke up to this. That's not a picture of me, that's someone else. But, um, you know, it's clear that this surgeon left pockets of skin to receive implants when this woman changed her mind. So her consent was violated intentionally. And, you know, women who choose to go flat, they want to be done in one surgery. That's, that's one of the overriding goals, and the research supports that. So leaving a woman like this... Um, she's going to have to get another surgery to fix it. And that's not in her best interest to, to do that to her. So the cost is very high. Um, women, especially with intentional flat denial, get uh, post-traumatic stress symptoms. Um, you know, there's costs to surgery and additional recovery time. And it's, 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 it's really traumatic. It's also corrosive, morally corrosive to the medical profession. Um, hospital systems will you know, protect surgeons who do this against complaints um, instead of addressing the problem. That's unacceptable. So that's what happened to me. I spent a year after I was intentionally denied my flat closure trying to get the Cleveland Clinic to acknowledge what happened and take steps to protect their patients, um, and they just refused. So at the end of the year, I staged a topless sit-in in the CEO's office. So I wasn't going to let them sweep it under the rug anymore. I knew that if it happened to me, that it was happening to other women. I'm a very privileged person. I brought pictures, a witness. I had a plastic surgeon recommended by my cancer surgeon. I was at Cleveland Clinic, which is the number two hospital in the country. If my consent can, could be brazenly overridden like that, then it's, it's happening to other women. I knew. I knew that for sure. And the research shows that. It's one out of 20 are intentionally denied a flat closure. So, not putting on a shirt um, is committed to solving this problem and making sure women 
get acceptable surgical results. Strategizing is a big part of it, uh, especially at the beginning. So we've identified five barriers to parity. Um, unclear language was the first one, and that actually was solved earlier this year. We worked directly with the National Cancer Institute to get the term aesthetic flat closure defined in their dictionary of cancer terms. Um, prior to that, the ambiguity created a situation where surgeons could fudge it and say, well, I didn't know that's what she meant by flat. Now it's clearly defined. Um, so expectations are clear on both sides. Big step forward. Uh, paternalism is a big barrier. Um, you know, surgeons need to understand that the patient knows her body better than they do and that consent is non-negotiable. Protectionism, um, where hospitals protect surgeons that intentionally deny their patients a flat closure, that needs to end. That's corrosive. Um, there's no defined standard of care, that's a, that's a detailed issue, and we're working with um, surgeons and professional societies on that. We'll talk about that more later. Poor reimbursement is the last uh, piece of the puzzle, so there's no clear way to get reimbursed for the extra work required to produce a nice, smooth, flat contour, and that's a problem. Uh, that means a lot of cancer surgeons who are doing good flat closures are doing it on their own dime, and that's unacceptable. People, surgeons deserve to be paid fairly for their work. This is about the National Cancer Institute term. Um, flat. So there's a mechanism for accountability when this term is in your medical notes. Um, we believe that that will drastically reduce the incidence of intentional flat denial. And also just it makes it clear to everybody involved, patients, providers, insurance companies, everyone, what an aesthetic flat closure is. And what, what it is is a rebuilding or a reconstruction of the chest wall contour. So we made this Let's awareness video. Ask your surgeon for an aesthetic flat closure, as defined by the National Cancer Institute, so they understand exactly what you want. A smooth, neat, flat chest with no extra skin at all. You want a comfortable result you can live with. You want an aesthetic flat closure. Aesthetic flat closure. Aesthetic flat closure. An aesthetic flat closure. That was uh, Dr. Tawari at Midwest Breast and Aesthetic Surgery. He's a plastic reconstructive surgeon who's been a longtime supporter of not putting on a shirt's work. Um, it's important to, you know, include providers in our work because they're the people providing the services. Um, our website is the primary vehicle for empowering patients directly with tools and information and resources. All of our information on our website is medically reviewed. It's not putting on a shirt.org. Um, we have brochures they can print um, or order shipped. Um, they have questions to ask your surgeon and pictures and a list of resources. We have a flat closure gallery, a photo gallery on our website. It's really useful um, as a tool to help uh, patients and providers, you know, understand each other and understand what a good aesthetic flat closure is and what is an, an, an unacceptable closure. Um, there's help for victims of flat denial. Um, I wish, you know, these are all the things I wish I had sort of understood from the beginning, but I had to feel my way through blindly. I don't want that to happen to other women. Um, we have information on living flat, so people who are contemplating going flat can see what it's like to live flat and read about it. Um, that's the website. We also have, we're going to have information on preparing for surgery, but that's not published yet. It's under medical review. We also provide um, resources for surgeons. Uh, we ship brochures for them to use in their clinics for free. We use our donations for that. We collect stories from patients, both women who had a great closure and women who were denied, so that they can see the contrast and the difference that the gift of a, a high quality aesthetic flat closure makes in a, in a woman's life moving forward. We have a journal article library for t surgical technique and outcomes. That's important for surgeons that want to learn more about the issues. Um, we have a coding page. It's important, um, especially for providers. They deserve to be fairly paid for their work. And we have oncoplastic training links for general surgeons who don't typically have that type of training as a default. We work with a bunch of stakeholders. Um, the Oncoplastic Breast Consortium is an international body 
uh, whose mission is to bring oncoplasty to routine patient care, and they include optimal flat closure in their mission statement. We worked with them to, to get that going, and I'm on the um, patient advocate council or committee. Um, at Not Putting on a Shirt, we have an international advocate council where we bring together flat advocates from around the globe to learn from each other and speak with one voice to stakeholders. Um, we reach out to providers in various ways to um, facilitate you know, them learning about aesthetic flat closure. Um, we work with Tiger Lily Foundation um, to promote diversity and inclusion in our work. And we have worked with other organizations, uh, professional organizations, to bring should be soon. The goal is an optimal standard of care, and we don't have that right now. Under an optimal standard of care, it would be clear that those egregiously bad results are not acceptable. We're not there yet. Um, there's a couple of things we need to do, and we need to work directly with surgeons to do this. We're having our first meeting of our um, committee of um, cancer and plastic surgeons in early December to talk about this research agenda. These are all things that need to happen as first steps towards a better standard of care. We are going to talk about getting flat closure techniques included in training for general surgeons. Talk about promoting shared decision making, which is a supports patient autonomy and informed consent. And, you know, anywhere that breast reconstruction is mentioned in patient care, aesthetic flat closure should be mentioned alongside of it and given equal time. And that's critical for, for if we're talking about providing patients with all of their options in a fair and full disclosure. Let's see. We have a legislative agenda. So the Women's Health and Cancer Rights Act of 1998 makes sure that insurance companies can have to cover breast reconstruction costs. We believe that should also include chest wall reconstruction, which is what aesthetic flat closure is. Right now, a lot of times women are denied revision surgery to fix those, those terrible results that you saw earlier, that you can also see here on this petition. Women shouldn't have to fight their insurance companies for that, and doctors shouldn't have to waste their time fighting insurance companies to get paid. So this is one of our five to ten year goals. Our end game is parity. It's about dignity. You know, it's a valid choice. It's a beautiful choice. It's a healthy choice. And every woman facing mastectomy deserves to know about aesthetic flat closure and all of her other reconstructive options and for her informed consent to be respected every single time with no exceptions and to receive an aesthetic outcome that she can live with that supports her health and well-being and her dignity. All right. So you can learn more at our website, notputtingonashirt.org, and we're also on social media. Um, that's it for now, and we'll go ahead and take questions.